Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I want to show you how to make a super easy bunting for a cake. It's very easy. Let's get started and I'll show you how. You're going to need a rolling pin, some circle cutters, any all sizes. Um, you can use a piping tip, whatever you can find to cut some circles, and a rotary cutter. You're also going to need a tool to help you shape the ruffles. I forgot to show that, but it could be a pencil or anything you have. We're going to roll our fondant out, and I find when I have dark colors like red or navy blue, I like to roll them out and let them lay uh, lay out in the air and dry for about 15 minutes before I work with them because you've had to use so much of the gel coloring that it leaves the fondant a little bit tacky. So I lay these, I roll these fondants out, I roll them out very, very thin. The thinner you can get them, the more fabric-like your bunting will look. I take and roll those out, and then I flip them from side to side several times so that they're good and dry when I try to start cutting my circles. We're going to take and cut a base circle out of the color, you know, whatever color you've chosen, and you can do, obviously, whatever color you want, and you can make as many stripes as you would like. You're going to take that same cutter, and you're going to cut your first stripe. We're going to cut those. We're gonna, and you'll see that I flip my color. It, it, whatever I cut, I flip it over while I'm working so that it dries as I'm working because the side that's been on your mat will be tacky. So we're going to figure out what the next size circle we're going to need for the next stripe. We're going to cut those. We will also lay these to the side, and I'm going to flip them as I lay them out. Now, we're going to take that first circle, and we're going to pick your cutter that will make the, the size stripe that you want. You may want a fat stripe or a skinny stripe, whatever you want, and try to cut it as centered up as you can so that, uh, obviously, your stripes will be straight. We're going to cut those. I lay these aside. Now, this piece that I cut out of the center of this one, I should have saved over to the side. It will become my center piece. I'm going to cut my next stripe. I'm going to determine how wide I want that one. And then I'm going to cut that one. Then we're going to go back and take that piece that we cut out of our biggest circle. And we're going to cut our small inner circle out of that one. So you will be left with four pieces, your base, your two stripes, and your center. And this obviously can be any color or as many as you would like to work with. I take and stretch that first stripe a little bit just so that it fits around the edge of my base circle to give me room for my next stripe, you know, for it to show color between my two stripes, I guess is what I'm saying. I lay that down and get it as centered up as I can. I take my next stripe and I center that one up. And here in Texas, the weather is always humid, so you might have to tack these down with water. I don't because I'm in Texas, and it leaves our fondant extremely tacky. So I just take and touch those to the base one to get them to stick. Then you're going to lay your center circle in there, and you will be left with a bullseye-looking circle. I take my rotary cutter and I cut from one side directly to the center and then open it up. It's really just that easy, guys. It starts to um, fold up on its own, but you can take any kind of tool and help you form this. I take and cut to the center and then open it up. It starts to form a little bit on its own, but you can take and make it as roughly or gathered as you would like. I take that little plastic tool and I just stick it under it to help me form the ruffles. You can do it very roughly. You can do it a little bit. It don't have to have many. You're also, when you get done, depending on how well it's shaped up, see some of mine will kind of be straight across the more roughly you make it. I take the rotary cutter and I just run right across that to straighten it up. Now, there may be a time when you want to leave it like that so that it looks more like a V-shape, and that's completely fine. 
but I usually take and straighten mine up, like make it straight across at the top. And there you have it, guys. You can see the one on the right is very folded. The other two are not as folded. And those are all the exact same size circles. But look how different they look just by how I ruffle them. That's how easy these buntings are, guys. I hope you can use this trick on your next cake. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.